In this episode, I want to talk about graphs uh, as a, another kind of data structure. Um, it, they are related to trees. They are sort of a superset of trees. Um, and there are a number of different uh, applications that uh, can use graphs, and uh, we've actually seen some of that already. Uh, so the things that we've looked at so far uh, include linked lists, stacks, queues, priority queues, sets, bags, trees, and heaps. Um, and what we've yet to cover, and which we will be covering in the next uh, three or four weeks, are graphs and graph algorithms, search algorithms, including hash tables, or especially hash tables, and then sorting algorithms. Okay, so uh, a couple weeks ago, we talked about what graphs were. Uh, and this is the definition that I use. So a graph is a collection of vertices and edges. Uh, you can name a graph, uh, and the naming of the graph includes in, uh, the names of the sets for the vertices and the edges. Edges themselves are represented as ordered pairs. So you have um, a pair of vertices um, from the vertex set. Uh, those pairs, those ordered pairs, uh, uh, represent um, an edge that join nodes V1 and V2. Uh, now, uh, there were some other um, facts, uh, things like, you know, a path in the graph is a sequence of vertices or a list of edges showing how to traverse from a source vertex to a destination vertex. Um, and then we had this idea that uh, a graph is connected if there's a path in the graph connecting every vertex uh, in V to every other vertex in V. Okay, so uh, um, so here are two sample graphs. We had these in our previous example, our, in our presentation on trees. Uh, I just wanted to reiterate here that uh, we have two graphs. One of them is connected and one of them is not connected, um, but they both have the same set of vertices. Okay, so this is... Um, uh, so, so that's uh, sort of the basics of graphs. Uh, now, trees are also special cases of graphs. And in, in the case of a tree, uh, or um, you have uh, we're basically k regular trees, where tr where you have vertices that have mo at most k children. Uh, you have no uh, cycles in a tree, uh, and you have nodes that are essentially. Um, uh, leaf nodes as well as root and interior nodes. Now, uh, when we implemented trees and binary search trees and heaps, um, we had, well, at, at least with uh, binary search trees, we had nodes that had specifically two children, um, and you had no backlink, so you didn't know whether or not, or you didn't know where the where the parent uh, of a particular node was. Unless, of course, we were using the array representation for a heap. Now, arbitrary graphs have to be implemented in a different manner. Um, and in the case of an arbitrary graph, we don't really know whether or not uh, the graph is, is regular. So we can't, for instance, have um, a node and then have a number of, of links within the node uh, as an implementation. So I can't have like a node class and then have a right child or a left child or however many links that are required because it's pretty much unknown how many uh, how many links you would have and basically it would be bonded by the number of other elements that you have in the tree or sorry in the graph so uh, in order to, to implement a graph uh, we basically have two different kinds of representations uh, the first one is called an adjacency list the second is called an adjacency matrix so with an adjacency list, what you have is that for each node in the graph, you maintain basically a list of nodes that are directly connected to that node. Uh, and in this case, then you can implement it using a linked list or some kind of table. Now an adjacency matrix, on the other hand, is a two-dimensional array with vertices in horizontal and the vertical axes. And then for each entry x, y in the, in the matrix, you have a 1 if the nodes x and y are adjacent, and you have a 0 or actually some other value if there is no edge. 
So the A1 in an adjacency matrix would basically say that two nodes are directly connected, whereas some other number tells you some other kinds of information about, uh, about the graph. Uh, we'll see initially that a zero means that there's no edge, but we can use other values in there to tell us other things about, uh, about the relationship between two uh, vertices in a graph. So here is a, an adjacency list shown as a table. So the, uh, the first uh, row in this table um, has uh, element A, and it says that, um, or vertex A, and it says that vertices C, D, and F are directly connected to it. So if you look at the picture of the graph itself, you see A, it's directly connected to C, D, and F. Likewise with B, it is directly connected to nodes D and E. Node C is directly connected to node A and F. Node D is directly connected to A, B, E, and F. Node E is connected to B and D. Node F is connected to A, C, and D. And then node G is, is disconnected, so it isn't connected to any nodes. Now we can have a similar type of representation of an adjacency list using linked lists. Um, and in this case, if you have a linked list, then you need to sort of traverse the entire list using linked list operations in order to find out what all of the nodes are. Whereas uh, with a adjacency list in a table, you can just refer to the table contents. But basically here, so we have you know, a list of nodes and then uh, in that list of nodes, there's linked lists, and they each have uh, links to uh, the elements that uh, a particular node is connected to. So A is connected to C, D, and F. B is connected to, oh, they should read B and D. It's a typo there. C is connected to A and F, and so forth. Now, an adjacency matrix is a table that shows that... Uh, uh, shows how different nodes are connected to each other, how different vertices are connected to each other. So a one in a, an adjacency matrix tells us that, that node A, or tells us that one node is connected to another node. So node A here, in this case, is connected to node C. Node A is also connected to D, and then node A is connected to F. Uh, now, with an adjacency matrix, there's a couple of different ways that you can represent this. You could represent... Uh, all of this in just the upper half above the diagonal uh, to show that, uh, well, especially if you have just a regular, uh, you have a graph that is not directed, so an undirected graph uh, where the links themselves have no direction. Uh, so in that case, then it's sufficient to just represent all of the data in one half of the tree. If you do have a directed graph, then you can represent them in both the upper and the lower half, and, and, and then that would indicate whether or not you had directionality in the nodes. Uh, in the examples that we're going to look at, pretty much we're looking at undirected graphs, so uh, it's a bit redundant to have uh, the ones both on both sides of the, um, of the, the diagonal, but I'll just go ahead and leave that here um, for our discussions. Now, uh, we can also use adjacency matrices to represent uh, multigraphs. So a multigraph is a graph that allows for multiple edges between two adjacent vertices and for self-loops. So I can have a, a link from A to A, or I can also have here are two links from B and E. Uh, and the way that we represent this in a, uh, an adjacency matrix is to uh, have a number indicating uh, the number of links. So in the case for B and E, we should have the number 2 there. Um, in the case of, you see here, A to A, we have on the um, uh, on the diagonal, we have a 1. Uh, we should also, it looks like there's another error, a little typo here. This There's a self-loop from F to F, so there should be a 1 here, and yeah, so this is an error here. This one should actually be swapped with uh, the one here on the diagonal uh, because G is disconnected, so there is no link from, from F to G. The other type of graph that we could have is a weighted graph. Um, 
And uh, so what a weighted graph is, is where you have a graph that has links that are labeled with, uh, with a number. The number indicates a weight, so the cost of, of using that edge. So you could think of it as being a distance between edges in, in a map, for instance. Uh, you can represent a weighted graph in an adjacency matrix um, where the entries indicate the weights. Um, and so if you have entries with no edge, then you label them with infinity or some really large number. Um, and then other nodes, or sorry, other locations in the graph just indicate uh, the weight of the edge. So for instance, here is the same graph with the weights. Um, and you see here that on the edge from A to C that the weight is 3. And we have that both here on the upper diagonal and the lower diagonal. Uh, and the, the weight from edge D to E is 4. And so you see here that both on the, over, the lower and the upper diagonals that, uh, that the edge is, weight, is marked with 4. So in this graph here, non-zero en entities or entries represent edges. You could actually also have other types of adjacency matrices where, uh, where a 1 indicates that you have a, an edge, a direct edge, and then uh, other numbers that are greater than 0 indicate the, uh, the weight or the number, the shortest path to get from, from one node to, an, to another. And, and when we did the, uh, the numbers exercise, the adjacency matrix that you created there was a shortest path uh, matrix that indicated what the distance was between uh, any two given nodes. So anyway, that, uh, these are the different representations for, for graphs. Uh, what I'm going to talk about next is graph algorithms, and we'll do that in a following episode where we'll look at traversal and search, uh, and then eventually we'll look at shortest path algorithms and graph metrics.